welcome back. Today I'm talking about something not so positive, and that is culture shock. And honestly speaking, being a TCK, a third culture kid, somebody who grew up in a whole bunch of different countries, I thought I was invincible towards culture shock. I thought, you know, I've experienced everything from, well, you know, being held at gunpoint to nearly being sold for a few camels in Dubai and to super crazy experiences in Pakistan. I've experienced so much that I thought moving to a place like Singapore would be a piece of cake. <laughs> and it is not a piece of cake. It is fun, it is great, I have so many nice friends here, but there are still things that take a little bit of getting used to and some things that I am starting to question. So let me talk a little bit about culture shock first. Culture shock is generally something that comes after you have started settling in a country. So the first part of settling in a new country will be the honeymoon phase where you'll feel like, oh my goodness, everything is so beautiful, everything is so amazing. But then you start settling into a routine and you may start noticing things that make you uncomfortable, things that are very difficult. Uh, for example, my, my toilet broke recently and I felt just like, my world is ending, this is the worst thing that could happen. And like little things like that will be escalated just because you are alone in a new place and something that could happen normally back home, like your toilet breaking, will really start affecting you. So those are, you know, some little signs of culture shock where you start questioning why things are being done the way they are done in a certain culture. And you may even start questioning yourself saying, did I really make the right decision to come to this country or, you know, what am I doing here? Before I start talking about some culture shocks I've had in Singapore, something that's really helping me get through the culture shock, and you can watch my other videos called uh, How to Stay Positive When You're Moving to a New Country, is speaking to people who are in similar situations. So I go to Mandolingo, which I always talk about because I love it, which is a language exchange event. And I met a really nice Japanese girl and she actually moved to Singapore in the same week that I did. Um, and it was really nice sharing my experiences with her just to connect and be like, wow, you know, I'm not the only one feeling this way. And if I think XYZ thing is strange and she agrees, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not crazy. <laughs> Interestingly, something that we both agreed on is the working culture here. Um, and a strange fact is that we both find our offices to be extremely quiet. And uh, I have experience uh, working in Japan and the offices weren't noisy and neither was my South African office like, noisy, but when we, the girl and I both started working here in Singapore, we realized nobody talks at work. Like, someone will answer the phone or you'll answer a question, but it's exceptionally quiet and it's a little awkward. So yes, interesting things that I'm picking up on. I have made a list of culture shocks. Some of them may not be <laughs> really crazy to you, but these are little things that I'm picking up on and noticing that, oh, you know, this is very different from what we do at home. Uh, so yes, I started on quiet offices and, and, and the thing that goes hand in hand with that, that I'm finding very strange, is that people don't say good morning at the office. I have a very small office, not a lot of people, maybe six or six or seven on a given day, but there's only about one or two people that actually really say good morning when they come in. And uh, I was speaking to my Japanese friend and she said she experienced the same at her office, that people just don't greet and it's very awkward. Um, I come from an office where you walk and you're like, hey guys, how was your weekend? Or like, hey, you look so cute today, where did you get your dress? Whereas here it's like, go to your desk and maybe I'll be like, morning to my colleague and she'll just be like, mm-hmm, or like, hi. <laughs> There's no excitement and warmth and it really has a negative effect on your, your working ethic because it's stimulating to work in an environment where people are happy and excited to, to be there and not that you can always be happy and excited, like no need to be fake, but it just feels like everybody is so down and depressed. And I read an article, or a few articles actually, that actually says that Singapore is the most unhappy culture, most unhappy country. People are so sad here. On a similar note, when I go to convenience stores or cafes or restaurants, um, I'm quite used to the Japanese culture where once you walk in, it's like, Irasaimase, welcome, hello, you know, they, they greet you. Here they can, like, I've had transactions at cashiers where they don't say a single word. Very awkward. And I'll be like that person who's like, hi, how are you? And they'll be like, scan item. 
How hard is it to say hello? I mean, why did Rome do as the Romans do, right? So now I've started not greeting. And it just feels not nice. Like, I want to acknowledge the person's presence. So I just kind of go like, I just give them a smile, but they never smile back. It's really awkward. And this one is specifically for me. Everything has fish. <laughs> I don't eat seafood uh, or any form of something that comes from the ocean. It makes me very, very nauseous. So the one time I was with a friend and I specifically asked the lady at the hawker center stall, does this wonton soup have any fish in it? And she's like, no, 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 just chicken. I took the first bite and I nearly vomited because it was like a fish base soup. And I guess people, like a lot of people here have told me seafood is not fish or fish is not seafood. Like they associate seafood with maybe crustaceans or shrimps and then fish, fish, fish with something else. So I have to be like, I don't eat seafood or fish. Um, so that's really difficult for me personally. And I find it hard to find food that I'm used to. I really do enjoy Singaporean cuisine. I love a few certain dishes here, but um, it's very expensive and very difficult to find just a wholesome, healthy salad or a steak here. Uh, so I guess that is maybe a little bit of a culture shock, just that everything I ever eat every day is Singaporean food and my body is not really used to it. Okay, climate-wise, I, I love the Singaporean weather. It is so nice that it is just warm every day because I hate the cold. Coming with the really hot weather and the humidity means a change in my dress code. And I grew up in very conservative um, Muslim countries, so out of respect for the countries, I wouldn't wear like strap top t-shirts, for example, or short shorts. Whereas here, it's really like, you can't do anything about the fact that the weather is so hot here. So I have started wearing shorter shorts or shorter skirts just because it's so hot to wear jeans. And I guess you could maybe interpret that as not really a culture shock, but just something that I have to get used to. Like my whole life of 24 and a half years, I've been used to being respectful and covering up, but now I'm like, it's so hot. Okay, let's take off a few layers. Queuing. People love, okay, nobody loves queuing. People queue forever in Singapore. And there's this really like kyasu culture. Kyasu is singlish for not wanting to miss out on anything. So if there is a new shop, you will queue for three hours because you have to try the new bubble tea or the new food. And um, usually people will check the queues and be like, oh, okay, since there are lots of people, that means it's a popular place, so let's join the queue. And some people will just be queuing, and they won't know what they're queuing for. It is crazy. I remember I went to, so they have a Shilin night market in Taiwan, and they brought Shilin night market here to Singapore for two weekends. I'm not kidding you. I queued for three hours for, I mean, we didn't even get it in the end because we were queuing so long. I can't remember what we were queuing for some form of food. Terrible! So many people! Okay, and the last thing that really grinds my gears is the personal questions. Ah, okay. I do consider myself somebody who shares a lot. My way of working through problems or getting through a situation is to talk to people about it. But conversely, I find it very invasive when people I don't know very well or strangers here in Singapore will ask me extremely personal questions right from the first five minutes of meeting me. And the worst is that they don't reciprocate when I ask back. They'll just be like, oh, okay, or they'll change the topic. So it's a bit awkward when you put someone on the spot, like how much are you paying for your rent? Uh, that's a very personal question. I do have quite an expensive place and I have my personal reasons for that, for wanting to stay alone. But they were very, very shocked and they're like, oh my goodness, that's so expensive. And yeah, it is, but it's my personal decision. Along with that, um, people are very, very interested in my like private romantic life here. Like, are you dating anyone and how, how are your dates going? And oh, are you going on a date? It, like, wow, guys, sometimes it may feel a little immature, like you're back in high school and they're like, oh, you're going on a date, are you dating someone? That's also personal. And one of the very first questions my boss asked me in my job interview on Skype was, are you coming to Singapore for a boyfriend? It's like, uh, no, I'm coming here because I would like to experience living and working in a new country like Singapore. I'm not moving for a boy. So very, very personal questions here. And um, strangely enough, I mean, they'll, they'll ask so many personal questions, but I found that at church and at like cell groups and new events and meeting people, uh, people don't 
say hello first. And uh, I was actually at a cell group and so a cell group is like a church group where you meet after church and you discuss, you know, what's going on in your week, you pray for each other, you discuss the sermon. And I was invited by a friend, uh, so my friend brought me, but she was like busy leading the worship. So I went and sat. Nobody said hello to me. And I am naturally a shy person, so I wasn't going to be like, hi, nice to meet you. And I'm not expecting them to do that either. But it was very awkward because I just kind of sit there and like, I'm trying to say hello to someone, but they're talking to their friend. And I mean, nobody says hi. And it's happened multiple times. And I know maybe out of my own I should be trying to say hello, but it's difficult, so maybe Singaporeans also struggle with shyness, so it's a lose-lose situation because we're both shy. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. Now, to finish off on not such a happy note, as I was saying at the beginning of the video, my toilet broke, and my agent told me to get a plumber. Uh, he first lied to me and said that, you know, a plumber came to your door already and you weren't there, so he left. Uh, which is a complete lie because I was at home the whole time and the message was sent at 7 a.m. What kind of plumber comes between midnight and 7 a.m.? Lies. The biggest issue that got me was when we were arranging the plumber, and technically they have to pay because it's within one month of me being in this apartment, uh, when I got the plumber, he first uh, the, la the agent told me to pay, and it was $280, which I really couldn't afford at that moment. When I told him it's expensive, he's like, why don't you use your feminine charm to negotiate a cheaper price with the plumber? And I told him, wh like, whoa, I'm really offended by your language. And his words were, oh, you know, um, I'm not meaning to offend, it's just a tongue-in-cheek, it's a joke, take it lightly. No, I am not going to take it lightly because you are perpetuating stereotypes that women can use their charm and their bodies and their femininity to flirt with men to get better services or to get cheaper prices. That is so wrong. And I don't think he would have said that to a male um, tenant at all. You you don't go to a guy and be like, oh, why don't you just flirt with a plumber to get a cheaper price? That is so, so unprofessional. And it really, really made me angry. I do want to give a disclaimer that I am very happy here in Singapore. I did not move to this country to criticize. I understand everybody does things differently in different countries. I am a visitor in this country. I really appreciate the hospitality I'm getting here. You know, the weather is great. I have so many wonderful friends. So please do take what I said with a pinch of salt. I am not insulting how people do things here. Uh, very different video from what I usually do, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any thoughts, uh, please let me know in the comments and let's have a chat there. Alright, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!